We just got back from Florida uh, last night. Uh, flight was a little bit of a disaster. Some of you on Instagram or, or even some of you that have been following closely or patrons even uh, know, knew we were down in Florida, uh, South Florida, Jamie and I, uh, just for a, a Thanksgiving trip by ourselves. We had a great time down there, had some, some great whiskey, met some great people, just a great time. But it just kind of made me think back. That was our Thanksgiving trip and obviously Thanksgiving, being thankful. I love bourbon. When I made this channel, I did not expect it to grow and to, to think that we've now had the channel for just over two years and we're we're over well, almost 20, almost to 25,000. By the time you guys see this, it might be 25,000 uh, subscribers, which I, I didn't think that was gonna happen. Uh, I thought that maybe someday it might grow, grew way faster than I ever expected. So thank you all of you for that because it's, it's all of you out there for, for that. And special thank you to our Patreons. Uh, we have a, the best Patreon community on uh, on YouTube and uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Some, some of the best people out there. I'm thankful for just this whole thing. When I started making videos, it was because I was passionate about bourbon. I got excited about bourbon and I wanted to share it with everybody. So I love whiskey in general. I think it's an absolutely fascinating product. It comes, it's created in such a unique way. It's just a fascinating process. The process of putting whiskey, like, Putting a distillate into a, a, an oak vessel of some kind, whether it's a new oak for bourbon or it's used whatever for some scotch, just the process of putting a distilled spirit into a, a, a vessel and just letting it sit there. And it just, this the chemistry happens and all of this fascinating stuff happens to create what we love. The distribution of whiskey, particularly bourbon in the United States, is so fragmented and it's impossible. So when I say it's usually available, there's always somebody that says, I can't get it. And I feel so bad because I, when we talk about like findable and unfindable and allocated, everybody is so different. And so this particular one, let me just show you. It's, it's old Forester 1920. It's a, what I would call a modern classic. It's just one of those delicious bourbons that I continue to go back to. I always have one on the shelf. When I first started in bourbon, I liked 1910 better, but now I like 1920 better. And that's one of the things I love about bourbon is that you're your palate changes, your taste change. The the whiskey that you're drinking, it the preference just changes. And even when you open a bottle, like when I first opened this bottle and it was brand new, it tasted one way and then I let it sit for a month and after a glass or two had been poured and it tasted a different way and now it's about halfway done and it tastes just a little bit different because the air mixes and this chemistry happens and the magic of this thing that we kind of all are passionate about. I mean, if you're watching this video and you've gotten this far into the video, then, well, you you, you probably are feeling the same way about bourbon that I am. And I'm, I'm excited by that. I think it's just, it's an amazing, fascinating process. Now, at this point, I do have to inject a comment. On December 8th, we're going to be raising money for Make-A-Wish Foundation. December 8th, 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be doing our annual Christmas fundraiser. We've got an amazing bottle list. Uh, so check out whiskeyrow.shop to the latest blog post there. We've got all the bottles that are going to be available. All the money goes straight to GoFundMe, which goes straight to Make-A-Wish. We don't touch any of it. All we do is draw names and, uh, and share the bottles with the winners. That's something else. I love about this community. We've how many channels out there on 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 whiskey tube that are on bourbon channels, whoever they are, are supporting various charities, various causes to help the community, and that's awesome. And I I want to support all of them because that's just you know part of what kind of makes us passionate about it as well. Another modern classic that I get excited about, and I I mean we talk about it all the time on whiskey tube, wild turkey rare breed, just fantastic bottle. You get I get excited when I can find bourbons that are delicious and available. And both of these are available. This one's a little, they're starting you know, $45, $55. Another thing I get excited for is even less expensive bottles that are just consistent winners. Elijah Craig Small Batch, 94 proof. It's just a really, really good uh, entry bottle whiskey. It's, it's really good and it's something to get excited about. Now, these might not be what you would have picked for this video if you were shooting that video and that, that's cool. And that's why we have comments in YouTube. Uh, people talk on Reddit, people, uh, go on to Instagram to share the bourbons and stuff that they get passionate about and that they love and I love that I think that's an amazing thing another one that I really really get excited for Evan Williams single barrel I think this is a great great bourbon. It's fairly available um, What comes in 86 percent a little on the low proof side for me, but it's just got this really really interesting nuttiness uh, Some delicious caramels and everything and I get excited about it and again, it's another one that's just available I get you know, I think most people on YouTube 
that are doing bourbon stuff, there's there's two sides of it, right? Like part of it is we want to talk about available bourbons. That is just a loaded term. It's it's hard to define what available is or non-allocated or easy to find because everywhere is different. And the people in Ohio versus the people in Virginia versus the people in California or Idaho or Florida. We also talk about allocated bottles and, and things that some things are allocated in Virginia, but they're not allocated other places where it's much easier to find. And everywhere is different. And I think one of that's one of the things that maybe I've done a poor job of just like really communicating how fragmented bourbon is from state to state. It really, really is not just in availability, but in pricing. Obviously, everywhere has a hard time finding Pappy or Michter's 20 or Weller Foolproof or whatever. But I mean, those are universally hard to find. But then other ones, some places maybe don't get Old Forester 1920. I know I love Cooper's Craft 100, and I know a lot of states do not get Cooper's Craft 100. But then sometimes you luck out. You enter a lottery, for example. Here in Virginia, I entered the lottery just like everybody else. There were like 30,000 entrants for what, uh, 20 bottles, 200 bottles, I think it was, 150 bottles, and I got a Weller single barrel. Pure luck. Just randomly entered it, not because I'm on YouTube, not because I paid a bunch of money for it, I paid retail for it. I just lucked into it. And I think that's one of the things that's actually fun about bourbon. I, I hate the lottery system. I complain about the Virginia ABC. Sometimes, I guess the point is, is that you just get lucky. You find a bourbon and... Well, you don't find it. You enter and and hope and pray that you find one. And sometimes you get lucky. And that's really, really awesome. And sometimes you go your whole life and you never get lucky. I've known people who've been in bourbon way longer than I have. And they still haven't gotten a lottery. Frustrating as that is for some people and as, as awesome as it was for me, um, I get it. But that's kind of like the, the love-hate thing that we get with bourbon. And I think a lot of people in the community are um, frustrated with not being able to find stuff. And, and I get it because now in Virginia, I can't find anything. Virginia has become a wasteland of bourbon. I can I, I live far enough away from the ABCs that when they send the announcements, I, I can't get there. I rely on, on, on you folks out there to help me get stuff. And you have been amazing to help me get stuff. But a lot of people out there that are watching this, you don't have that, you don't have that option. And it's frustrating. And I, I get it. I really, really do. And as much as I talk about allocated stuff and hard to find stuff, it's not that those things are necessarily these amazing experiences better, but they're just different and unique. And we get geeked out. At least I get geeked out on it and I get super excited and I want to share. And I posted some stuff on Instagram uh, on our trip. I was able to do a, a Heaven Hill 17 year bottle of bond taste that for the first time. And that was an absolutely special, delicious bottle. I, I got to taste at the same place, the same bar. They had a, uh, a Russell's Rick house and it was really, really good. The funny part and the sad part for me Russell's 13, in my opinion, was better than the Rick House. I've had some Russell single barrel picks that were almost 10 years and they were absolutely fantastic. And I won't say they were as good as Russell's 13 or as good as this Rick House, but they were not that far off. And so the, the, the point, I guess, is that just being able to get a Russell's single barrel that is even, even close to having some kind of a similar experience to those incredibly impossible, expensive and hard to find bottles is really kind of awesome. Like wild turkey rare breed is fantastic. And as much as I'm like, we'll put it in a blind and it might come in last against some heavily allocated bottles. It doesn't disappoint. It's really, really good. It's 1920, the same thing. Jack Daniels bonded. This is the, uh, the bonded replacement, the hunter proof um, one that just came out. We've got over here somewhere, I've got the original uh, Jack Daniels bottled and bond hunter proof, which I think was a little bit better than this. And then they started mass producing this one and making it available. And this isn't quite as good, but it's delicious. It's a great price. It's the, the, a fantastic sipping Tennessee whiskey. I know it's not bourbon, whatever, but this is really, really good. And again, it's another, I, don't call, I, won't, I won't call it a modern day classic, but it's a bottle that you can open up, enjoy, and really be happy and make great memories with friends and family and loved ones. Sometimes in bourbon, we get surprised. And that's one of the things I love too. And this was a huge surprise for me, but I absolutely think it's delicious. George Dickel. I hate George Dickel. Regular old George Dickel, I do not like. Dickel bourbon. Eight years, age stated. Uh, what does it come in proof-wise? 90 proof. It is surprisingly good. Like, everybody out there who's thinking Dickel Tabasco or standard 
George Dickel is just rolling your eyes. But if you haven't tried this thing, this is like surprisingly good for like 30 bucks. Like this is a steal. We do have some viewers that are international viewers or we have people who are, you know, Americans that are overseas or whatever. And you, I've, you know, I've seen some of the pricing that you guys send. Availability, they, you know, they have like eight bourbons to choose from and it's just atrocious. But for all of you out there that are in those situations, you, even though you don't have the same allocation of bourbon, you guys can get some amazing, amazing scotches. And I, I know this isn't a scotch channel. I geek out about most whiskeys. I like Irish. I like scotch. I love bourbon. And I really like rye. Balvenie, well, this is a 14-year Caribbean drum cask. This thing is delicious. I mean, yeah, it's a little more expensive if uh, for you bourbon folks out there, but it's delicious. I mean, it's got some of those scotch notes, but then it's got this delicious brown sugar thing going on from the rum, the Caribbean rum finish. Oh, it's just, it's fantastic. But it's a completely different experience from bourbon but still delicious to my palate. And I think that's one of the things too, is we, you guys watch some of these videos and some of you like what I like, and some of you don't like what I like, but you think I'm entertaining or you, you hate me. You watch one video, you click away and you never come back and you accidentally clicked on this one when you meant to click on somebody else and you somehow stuck it out this far. That's cool. Like part of the journey is figuring out bottles that you like. And I always talk at the end of my videos, find a bottle you love. Cause that's my wish for all of you out there is that somehow you'll find that bottle you love. Because I feel like anybody who's into drinking spirits, particularly whiskey, uh, and especially bourbon, there is something out there that you're gonna love. You're gonna just love the taste of it, the experience, and the memories that you make from it. This is not even a, a bourbon. This is Canadian Club 12 year age stated. Now, uh, Justin, a good friend, who I met through this whole whiskey thing. Bourbon friends are best friends. And uh, he sent this to me. He found this old Dusty up somewhere in, in Baltimore, I believe, and, and sent it down to me. Uh, it's a little small guy. It's what, 200 mil? Uh, but it's a 12 year Canadian club classic. And this thing is like one of the most delicious butterscotch bombs that you can imagine. And it's absolutely fantastic. And so sometimes you just luck into some old Dusty sitting on a shelf. And that's part of this whole, this Whole thing that I love. I, you know, I, I used to have a George T. Stag and it's gone. And do I at this point remember how it tasted? Kind of. I kind of remember how it tastes, but I do remember sending a bunch of samples to people so that they could taste it. And that memory I'm going to keep forever is that I got to share it with some people who would have never been able to taste a George T. Stag otherwise. However, you're getting a hold of your whiskey, whether you're getting samples sent to you, you're finding it in the store or you're going and picking something up that's sitting on the mid shelf for, for $32 that you just really, really like. Go out and make those memories with your friends, your family, your loved ones. Try different stuff, find out what you love. You know, I'm very blessed and fortunate and this kind of post Thanksgiving high I'm on right now, I'm just feeling fantastic. But I, I just wanted to, I guess, make a video and, and talk to you about why I love bourbon. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, Find a bottle you love.